Tim Burton, your remake of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory can't be any worse than the Planet of the Apes. You've never seen anything like this before? What? What are you talking about? This is a remake! How bad can it be? <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Boots to Reboots. In 2005, Tim Burton directed a more faithful adaptation of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I guess I'll discuss the beginning and start off positive. If you want a new paradise, simply look around and do it. In the remake, Charlie is played by Freddie Highmore, who currently plays Norman on Bates Motel. After working with him on Finding Neverland, Johnny Depp put in a good word for Highmore and Burton gave him the lead role. I like Freddy. He seems very sincere with his delivery and seems like a good kid. However, he doesn't have much to do in the remake and spends the second act taking a back seat to Wonka and the bratty kids. At the end, you're kind of like, oh yeah, Charlie's still here. How many children are left? Mr. Wonka, Charlie's the only one left now. What happened to the others? Oh, thank heavens, he's completely unharmed. Unharmed? What are you talking about? Since the fizzy lifting drink and gobstopper subplot aren't in the book and remake, Charlie really only wins by default, which makes it less special. He didn't win because he did something to earn it, like refusing to give Slugworth the gobstopper. He won because he finished the tour. But what if all five kids made it? Who gets the prize then? One of these children shall receive a special prize beyond anything you could ever imagine. Is it a lifetime supply of chocolate? I bet it's a lifetime supply of chocolate. In the remake, Charlie is only given a chance to shine in the beginning and third act. I really can't say he's any better or worse than Peter Ostrom from the original, but I wish he had more to do. For instance, I wasn't really moved when Charlie finds the golden ticket. In the original, Charlie hears that the last ticket has been found and he gives up hope for a day. Later he finds out that it was faked, finds some money, buys a Wonka bar, and in a suspenseful scene, finds the last golden ticket. In the remake, Charlie overhears that a Russian kid found the last ticket and then within a matter of seconds, finds some money, finds out the ticket was a fake, and buys a bar. First off, why even mention the fake ticket if you're just going to discard it within seconds? There isn't any time for it to sink in like it did in the original. It could have been cut and not affect a thing. Also, when Charlie finally finds the ticket, there really isn't any suspense or excitement. <laughs> Oh hey, that thing I wanted. Sticking closer to the book, Charlie's father is included in this version. Although it's more faithful, it doesn't really add much to the story. His father works at a toothpaste factory where they make Smilex, which is a nice nod to Burton's Batman. And hair color, so natural. Only your undertaker knows for sure. <laughs> During the first act, I feel like the movie rushes and we don't get to see who Charlie and his family are. I ended up not really caring for Charlie's father or his mother played by Helena Bonham Carter, who has even less to do. In the original, we spend a lot more time with Charlie, his mother, and Grandpa Joe. 
They seemed more developed because of it, and the additional songs Cheer Up Charlie and I've Got a Golden Ticket add a lot of character and heart to the film. The absence of these uplifting moments are definitely felt. You smell like peanuts. <laughs> if you want a new paradise, simply look around and do it. I guess the reason Charlie isn't featured that much in this version is because of Willy Wonka's backstory. Instead of keeping Wonka a mystery until his big reveal, we see glimpses of him in flashbacks told by Grandpa Joe and hear his voice through narration. I, Willy Wonka, have decided to allow five children to visit my factory this year. I don't know if it's in the book, but Grandpa Joe being a former employee who met Wonka takes away from his mystique as well. <laughs> Speaking of Willy Wonka's big reveal and the remake, it has to be one of the most disappointing things ever. No! Oh, I'm glad I have the power. <laughs> Wasn't that just magnificent? No. I was worried it was getting a little dodgy in the middle oh, part. Oh, God. That finale. <laughs> wow. That's Willy Wonka? Oh, shit. Gene Wilder wanted his Wonka to be unpredictable, so he came up with the idea of Wonka uncomfortably limping out and then somersaulting. From that moment on, we never know if Wonka is lying or telling the truth. In the remake, this intro is very annoying, and it concludes with a very awkward speech from Wonka. Good morning, Starshine. The Earth says hello. In the original, the kids were excited to see Wonka. The man was mysterious and complex. In the remake, they instantly look at him like he's an idiot and treat him like so for the rest of the movie. Why is everything here completely pointless? Jeff? Gene Wilder's Wonka was an eccentric genius. He randomly quoted literature. All I ask is a tall ship and a star to sailor by. Played classical music. Rachmaninoff. Spoke foreign languages. Uh, mesdames et messieurs, maintenant nous allons faire un petit voyage. And most importantly, was a smartass. Is it raining? Is it snowing? Is a hurricane a blowing? <laughs> After giving oddball performances like Hunter S. Thompson and Captain Jack Sparrow, I think Depp could have been a wonderful Wonka. But Depp's approach and direction from Burton take an interesting character and make him a rather dull one. I understand making Wonka awkward, but why did they make him stupid? The waterfall is most important. It mixes the chalk, turns it out, makes it light and frothy. Uh, by the way, no other factory in the world. You already said that. This version of Wonka feels inspired by Michael Jackson. He's someone who lives a secluded life, has repressed childhood memories, has daddy issues, and lives the life of an oversized child. He doesn't seem very intelligent, having to read off cards and Oompa Loompa probably wrote him, and is clueless to the daily operations of his own factory. Why would anyone want that? It will be the end of all kitchens and all cooking. Because the children are so uninterested by him and his factory, he has to overcompensate by pointing things out to them. People! Something exciting and interesting happening over here. Those pipes! Hey, look! Suck up the chocolate! and carry it away, all over the factory. Thousands of gallons an hour, yeah. The only one who seems excited is Grandpa Joe. The kids in the original were brats too, but at least they looked amazed by what they were seeing. It's a stick of the most amazing and sensational gum in the whole universe. <laughs> know why, know why? I guess it's hard to show emotion staring at a green screen. Hey, maybe you should show some emotion, some feeling. Maybe save your child who's in danger? No? Okay. <laughs> uh, 
Speaking of the backstory, I understand the braces because it's meant to make young Willie sympathetic, but because of the way Burton shoots it, Willie comes off as creepy. How is the audience supposed to get behind that? Oh god. Even I'm going to have nightmares. The Wonka doesn't work in this version, and it's a shame because a lot of time is devoted to him and his unnecessary backstory. It'd be like if they made a Wizard of Oz movie that focused on the wizard's backstory. We see who he was, how he ended up in Oz, and became the wizard. Hello? What do you mean they made a prequel to the Wizard of Oz? Uh, James Franco? You mean to tell me Sam Raimi did that instead of another Evil Dead? Oh, he produced another Evil Dead. THEY REMADE EVIL DEAD?! Things are going to get much better. Oompa, loompa, doompa dee doo. I've got a perfect puzzle for you. If I stopped somebody on the street and asked them to describe an Oompa Loompa, they would probably say little people with orange skin and green hair. Not an Indian dwarf. However, this is closer to the book. In early editions of the novel, the Oompa Loompas are shown as little African pygmies. Apparently people didn't like the idea of Wonka taking a bunch of Africans from their home and having them work in his factory. You know, SLIMES! So in later editions, the Oompa Loompas became little white people with golden hair. I'm fine with the original giving them a bizarre appearance. When you call something an Oompa Loompa, you picture something out of a Dr. Seuss book. You picture something fantastic that you've never seen before. So just like Wonka, the remake turns something that is interesting and makes it rather dull and forgetful. What are we talking about again? For the remake, Tim Burton hired actor Deep Roy to play not one, but every Oompa Loompa. They didn't even try to alter his image in any way. They just shot him against a green screen and copy and pasted him everywhere. This just screams laziness. Nothing against Roy's performance. I felt sorry that he had to learn all the dance moves and do the same thing 50 times just for one shot. But couldn't they have hired a couple more little people? We walked into the rehearsal room and there was Deep Roy. And, he go, and the rest of them? Took me by surprise. I was under the impression that I'm gonna be on the Rumpa Lumpas. Here's some trivia for you. The original movie was shot in Germany and they had a hard time finding dwarves to play the Oompa Loompas. You see, 30 years before the film was made, there was this thing called the Holocaust. Why does that sound familiar? The Nazis murdered Jews, homosexuals, and anyone else they felt were inferior, including dwarves. You mean to tell me you couldn't hire more than one dwarf in Hollywood, yet they could hire 10 in 1970s Germany? You lazy son of a bitch! Who can take a sunrise, sprinkle it with dew? Again, if I were to ask a random person to hum or sing an Oompa Loompa song, I bet they could do it and it would be the song from the original. It's pretty easy since it's the same tune every time, just with different lyrics. Kinda like the If I Only Had a Brain, a Heart, a Nerve song from The Wizard of Oz. Sadly, another thing that doesn't work in the remake are the songs. If you thought you were let down by the new Wonka, wait until you meet the new Oompa Loompas and they open their fucking mouth. Don't dare children be alarmed. Augustus Loop will not be harmed. Augustus Loop will not be harmed. And you thought the Oompa Loompas from the original were bad at lip syncing. The songs from the original are very catchy and have become classics. Ask me tomorrow to sing a song from the remake, and I don't think I could. They're forgetful, and very annoying. I don't like the look of it! What happened, Danny Elfman? You've created iconic music and themes for The Simpsons, Tales from the Crypt, Beetlejuice, Edward Scissorhands, Batman, Army of Darkness, and especially The Nightmare Before Christmas. Elfman's job was to take the lyrics from the book and add music to it. Each song is from a different time period or genre, including a very laughable rock song. It's bad. Aw, oh, it's a little Gene Simmons. The voices also don't match what you'd expect to come out of Deep Roy's mouth. 
so big and fun, so pretty fun and in fun. Yes. Pretty bad singer. In the end, the lyrics may come from the book, but the new songs can't even contend with the music from the original. For example, If you want to view paradise, simply look around and view it. And fight the poor girls down your cheek. Separate the sorrow and collect up all the cream. Pick up all the cream. Pick up all the cream. Are you bothered by remakes of classic films of yours like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Oh, uh, I think it's an insult. So does Tim Burton's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory deserve the boot? This could have been one of the better remakes. The themes and images are Tim Burton material. Johnny Depp is a talented actor who could have been an eccentric and brilliant Wonka. Danny Elfman is a well-accomplished composer who has written very memorable songs, but the end result doesn't live up to expectations. Considering who was involved, this should have been better. There should not have been the look on my face the entire movie. What was that? Oh my god. Those Oompa Loompas are beating that cow with a whip. I guess it is more kid friendly than this. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory should be an uplifting, whimsical movie for children. However, the remake is too dark and needed more color. Burton was probably going for the same thing he's repeatedly borrowed from The Wizard of Oz. You have the black and white ordinary world versus the colorful, magical world. But the Chocolate Factory isn't pushed far enough. The Chocolate Room isn't very bright and Wonka's wardrobe makes him disappear into the shadows instead of standing out. The look of the film is just too gray and desaturated. A children's movie like this should have high-key lighting. Besides for a decent Charlie Bucket portrayed by Freddie Highmore and an awkward laugh or two, the remake doesn't outdo the original at anything. Johnny Depp's Wonka is a sad comparison who is focused too heavily on. The songs are annoying, the evil kids aren't as developed, and the remake isn't very whimsical or heartwarming. Even if you didn't compare it to the original, as a standalone movie it's still underwhelming. Therefore, it's getting the boot. Sorry, Charlie. Sorry. <sighs> this has been Boots to Reboots. Thanks for watching. Twenty years. Come on, Charlie.